Welcome back uh, to um, Introductory Mathematics for AI. Uh, in the last lecture, uh, we started uh, the part 2, AI and Matrix. And uh, we went through the first part of Data and Matrix Statistics. Okay, so, and uh, in the earlier lecture, uh, we did define the ordered tuples and vectors, and uh, we studied uh, the vector operations. Today, uh, we're gonna uh, start uh, from section 2.3, matrices and tensors. Uh, then, we will uh, study the matrix operations and rules for uh, matrix operations. Okay, this is what we did study. The data can be written in a matrix, uh, in a vector form like this. Uh, that can be viewed uh, in a, a picture like this, vector OA and vector OA in 3D. And uh, yeah, we defined the vector operations. One um, is, is a scalar multiplication, and the other one was vector addition. We checked uh, the properties of vector operations that will be pretty much similar to the matrix operations that we're going to cover today. And we went through um, some examples mm -hmm. and also uh, we introduced the code um, to generate uh, the random vectors uh, to check the operations work without any problems. Now, we start uh, from the matrix and tensors. The data of height, uh, weight, age, and sex of many people can be gathered and arranged in a rectangular array called a matrix. This matrix is first law is the data for the first person, and the second row is data for the second person, and the third row for the data for the third person. So we can create the 3 by 4 matrix like this, whose rows are data for each person. Mm -hmm. As you can see in here, in this matrix, row are horizontal collections of numbers and the columns and columns are vertical uh, collection mm -hmm. in the array of numbers. A row vector can be thought of as a one by n matrix, row vector, one by n matrix, one by four matrix like this, and a column vector as an n by one matrix. In this case uh, three by one matrix column vector as a mm, 3 by 1 matrix. So we have constructed a 3 by 4 matrix A from the given data. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A matrix can be very useful for representing a digital image. For example, a small grid that appears when a digital image is enlarged, enlarged, enlarged is called a pixel. And each pixel contains a number indicating the brightness of the image. Mm -hmm. so we, uh, we, we can think of brightness as numbers. Therefore, uh, a grayscale image can be represented as a matrix. And the color image can be thought of as a three-dimensional matrix represented by the three channels, red, green, and blue, so RGB color. We can also think of a color image as a cube-shaped matrix. This can be called a three-dimensional tensor. 
In other words, a grayscale image can be expressed as a matrix by matching component of uh, the matrix to the brightness of the image in such a photographic image. The information of grayscale image and color image can be found. So here, uh, this uh, black and white uh, image can be written as a uh, n by n by n matrix like this. And the color image uh, has uh, uh, RGB, uh, the n by n matrix in, in this is three, in three, three dimension. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you may uh, want to know more, more about the tensor. Mm -hmm. And uh, machine learning systems are using tensors as uh, their basic data structure. The well-known Google's TensorFlow takes its name from this term, tensor. In short, a tensor can be said to be a container, which is a storage that can put data together. And since most of them deal with the number data, it can be understood as a container for numbers. So we can think of one-dimensional tensor as a vector, a two-dimensional uh, tensor as a matrix. We think of a one dimensional tensor as a vector, two-dimensional tensor as a matrix, and the matrix is uh, a generalized form as a tensor. I think here, mm -hmm. here, if we look at the, uh, in the wiki, we will see uh, more information on tensors and the similar question <laughs> was made uh, by my student. Uh -huh. Here, mm, about tensor. And this physics major student, uh, Kim Seok Ha, uh, mentioned about uh, what we wrote here. And, uh, uh, I gave an answer for that here. The, uh, what I said here uh, can be seen in here. What is the difference between a matrix and tensor in this web address? And there's a short answer to this question. A matrix is a grid of n by n uh, numbers surrounded by bracket, and, and, and the tensor is op open sort as a generalized uh, matrix, mm -hmm. like what I said. Uh, one dimensional matrix a vector is actually such a tensor and three uh, dimensional matrix uh, something like a cube of numbers and even zero dimensional matrix uh, which means a single number or higher dimensional structures but it is hard to be uh, visualized mm -hmm. okay anyway mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. yeah, we went through that. Next, we continue the matrix operations, section 2.4. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, three matrix operations are, are defined as follows. One, scalar multiplication. Mm -hmm. If you multiply scalar on a matrix, then we just multiply that scalar for each of the entries. So, if we multiply 2 on this matrix, then we just multiply 2 on all of the entries, components in the matrix. In fact, addition, in two matrices must have the same size first in order to define the vector addition. And so, we have 2 by 2 matrix and 2 by 2 matrix to be added. Then, all we have to do is just uh, component wise addition for each of the components one by one. One one entry and what one two entry and two one entry and two two entry can be obtained in 
this way, as you see in this example. Next, matrix product, matrix multiplication can be said. Mm -hmm. And if we multiply these two matrix, uh, 2 by 3 matrix times 3 by 2 matrix, uh, then uh, the f 1, 1 entry can be obtained by the, first, the product of this first row and first column. And this is actually inner product of these two vectors. And one, two entry is the inner product of this vector and that this uh, vector. And two, two entry uh, is obtained by the product, uh, in, actually inner product of uh, this vector and two, uh, so that can, the, the row and the second uh, column of the second matrix, something like that. So we, uh, Something like a uh, gear. It looks. It the shape is uh, like gear. It's a uh, yeah. Mm. Mm. There are but the many things that we like to say, but you just uh, uh, see how it works. So I, if I give you two matrix like this, then you can find the one on entry as twenty two, and two on entry as uh, twenty eight, like this. So this is a matrix uh, multiplication. And uh, then we will uh, see uh, the properties of these uh, matrix operations. So in section 2.5, we introduce the rule of uh, rules for matrix operations. Suppose the matrix ABC are appropriately sized matrix as uh, and a b are a little a b are scalars uh, then uh, matrix is commutative a plus b is equal to b plus a a plus b plus c is equal to a plus b plus c so it's associative matrix addition is associative and uh, a times b c is same as a b times C, so matrix product is associative as well. And the distributive law, and it's, uh, there are five distributive laws, and if we multiply one on a matrix, then, then uh, it is the same as the original matrix because of the uh, definition of the matrix product, mm, matrix multiplication. Mm -hmm. So if you multiply one, then you only multiply one on each of the entries. Uh, so that result should be the same as the original matrix A. So the next example mm, asks us to calculate uh, A plus B uh, and uh, AC and 2A for a given matrix A, B, and C like this. So we can easily find A plus B and 2A and AC like this. Uh, this can be done uh, with the code uh, so if you define the matrix ABC and if you ask to find A plus B and 2A and A times C then it gives us matrix addition and scalar multiplication and matrix product like this. As you see here, these answers are exactly as what uh, we did uh, with hand. The good thing is, uh, if we use the same code, uh, whatever we have, The same code work for any of the vectors. If we expand the size of the matrix, it will also work for that. Uh, if we have a, pro, pro, a, a proper size of the proper dimension of the matrix, the proper size of matrix for those operations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then a randomly generate matrix and scalar to check the matrix addition in year uh, or a 
multiplication, the scalar multiplication, and a matrix product. Hmm? Let's check it. Generate 4 by 5 matrix over the integer between uh, minus 10 to 9. And uh, do the same thing for the matrix B and that's between minus 5 to 4 mm -hmm. because uh, 0 is also, we start from the 0. Mm -hmm. uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 makes 5 from here. And generate 5. Uh, 5 by 3 a matrix C. So then we check. We check. We check the matrix A, B, C first. Then compute A plus B and K, A and A, C. Okay, so with the code, yeah, it's randomly generated 4 by 4. 5 matrix and 4 by 5 matrix and 5 by 3 matrices and go to k is equal to minus 5 which is randomly generated and a plus b ka and a plus a times c can be found in this way if we change this for example uh, like this uh, 15 by 14 by 15 matrix and 14 by 15 and 15 by 3 matrix like this then we will compute us the much larger matrix A, B and C that gives us the answer like this so now we can we can do the matrix computation with the above code uh, that I uh, introduced uh, to you here is the open problem. Perform matrix operation by applying op the operations on vectors and matrices learned above to matrix you find in other textbook. Other textbook, which can be found in here. Mm -hmm. In here, in here, this is the linear algebra book that I wrote mm, for free. You can download the free uh, linear algebra book. In here, you will see uh, the, in the full details of what we covered uh, today. Okay. Now, I also give you the define the matrix over the rationals and do the matrix product. And uh, this is the meaning of uh, the matrix product. Product of this vector and vector gives us the ij's entity of the matrix AB. So we call this is a King Sejong group. Matrix product can be considered as the, the, this Kyok letters. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, there are a lot more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you multiply two matrix, uh, then we use the star in between. And uh, the, yeah, I, show, I showed uh, the property. Of the matrix operations, and there are a lot more mm -hmm. in this difference. Mm -hmm. Okay, next. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here is another example, interesting example. Let's use the matrix to explain the relationship between sleeping hours and exercise hours and calorie intake and the weight and blood pressure of a person. We can define a matrix expressing the effort of hours of sleeping, hours of exercise, and calorie uh, intake on his weight and blood process uh, as follows. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we mentioned that n-dimensional vector uh, is on one by one matrix, which is a row vector, and n by one matrix is a column vector. In other words, a vector can be understood as a special case of a matrix. We used this structure because a patient's hours of sleeping, hours of exercise, and cal calorie intake may affect uh, his or her weight and blood 
pressure. Okay, so so we can express uh, that situation in this way. So if we put uh, those input vector x, then output vector come out. So here's three by one vector in and two by one vector out. So what that means is you know, we had a function here which is a um, which can be written as a matrix uh, whose size is uh, 3 by 2. So, for example, yeah, x1, 1 by 3 a vector times this 3 by 2 a matrix gives us 2 by 1 a matrix as an output. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh, so, yeah. This uh, gives some insight uh, of how this matrix and matrix operation can be uh, used in our real life uh, situations. Let's assume the following matrix A is created by investigating the change in those weight and blood pressure according to Kim's and many others average daily hours of sleeping and uh, hours of exercise and calorie intake mm -hmm. with other related health information. And if this matrix A is multiplied by the health information of a patient whose data tells eight hours of sleeping and one hour of exercise and 1,500 calorie intake in a day, the expected weight the patient is 71.9 kg and the expected blood pressure of this patient is 115.83 toll. Okay, then we could get the matrix A based on the patient's health information and their weight and blood pressure. You can now use the matrix A to figure out what will be a patient expected weight and blood pressure only using the information about his sleeping hours, exercise hours, and calorie intake. For example, if we put the, uh, one patient's information uh, to a matrix which is generated uh, from the whole bunch of data of the patients of one big University hospital, then if you product, if you multiply those two matrix, then the output, which means this, it should be the what uh, should be expected kind of normal um, weight and blood pressure. If the difference uh, is is too big for the incoming patient, then we can uh, make a prescription for him to improve to be a normal. And these are the kind of things that can be done uh, at the hospital uh, with uh, matrix operations uh, that will be mm -hmm, modeled uh, with the uh, help of artificial intelligence. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I wrote an article at understanding the deep learning uh, using matrix in this polymath for junior high school student, which can be found in here. And I wrote the uh, integration and linear system of equation and statistics and graph theory and probability and differentiation and factor and uh, uh, combination and permutations and function and graphs and prime numbers and sequences and networks and uh, here in, here in Gongi, uh, I did, yeah we uh, let's deal with the, the artificial intelligence with the mathematics in here. Uh, and you will find uh, yeah, greater distance method and derivatives 
and uh, a deep learning, deep learning, artificial neural network is here. Uh -huh. I think that's what I meant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Here. Yeah, because matrix can be also uh, used uh, to analyze the network. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where is the code? Mm -hmm. if, you, if you copy the code here, then we cut the code, draw the graph. Draw the graph of M and G, then it will give us uh, yes, it is a three. Now M one and two. Three, something like that. We suppose we have. Oh, we should have a three by three matrix. Three by three matrix. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah, if we put. Just write nine numbers. Suppose you give us three by three matrix, three matrix, and then this will give us a three by three matrix M and the digraph, directed graph of this matrix as following. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Anyway, yeah, this matrix and matrix operations can be uh, used uh, in uh, in the artificial intelligence and uh, deep learning. And, and that's just a very brief introduction to what the middle school student <laughs> to give them some motivations. Anyway, uh, if the observed value of body weight and blood pressure has a significant difference from the predicted value, then this matrix A must be modified. So we can find the modified matrix B by slightly adjusting the component of a matrix A to match it, the predicted value with the observed value. It can be done by back propagation algorithm in deep learning that we will learn uh, at the last uh, chapter of our textbook. And next, we define a transpose of a matrix. The transpose of matrix is simply a flipped version of the original matrix, like this. So this the transpose of this uh, two by three matrix is a three by two matrix, like this, and uh, and just uh, flip it along the diagonals. So transpose of this two by two matrix G H I J is G I H J diagonals and just. Uh, Flip it, and this three, the transport of this one by three uh, matrix is uh, the three or the three by one matrix like this. Okay. And for matrix A, B, and scalar K, the following properties of a transport matrix hold: the tra uh, trans A transpose A, or uh, transpose of A transpose is A, the transpose of A plus B is A transpose plus B transpose. And transpose of a V is B transpose times A transpose. And K A transpose is K times A transpose. Okay, this is the, uh, it can be easily verified. And if I show how, why it works is, here is the proof uh, for the one which uh, is interesting. And that you will see that you know, we can think of, we can think of the arbitrary entry you know, of this matrix, uh, ij entry of this matrix, uh, we compare ij and ij's entry of b transpose with transpose uh, with uh, the ij's entry 
of uh, AB transport. Yeah. GC, uh, CIJ prime, which is CJ, is, uh, say is, uh, can be written in this way, which means uh, this is uh, the IJ entry of B transport of transport. Okay. So IJ's uh, entry of AB, which is uh, CIJ. IJ's entry of AB transport, which is CIJ prime, which is this, is the same as the IJ's entry of B transport uh, times A transport, as you see in here. So, which implies the AB transport is the same as B transport times A transport. Uh, see? So, anyway, yeah, the, now you just understand uh, uh, these are the properties of the transport matrix. They find the transport of transport matrix of each of the following matrix. Suppose A and B is given, then A transport and B transport can be found in here. And you can easily find it by giving a command that A dot transpose. Uh, and parenthesis and the same for the B. Mm -hmm. Then you will have the transport matrix, which is exactly the same as what you have. If you change the matrix, still, if you will give, uh, the, this code will give the uh, proper transport of the given matrix A and B, like this. So you are, you are free for the, to find uh, the transport matrix uh, without any difficulty for any size of the matrix A and B. And next, diagonal matrix is a matrix uh, whose main diagonal, whose off diagonal entries are all zero, okay, like this. We are all are zeros. We write it as a diagonal of a11, a22, and da, 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 like this. This is a diagonal matrix. And identity matrix is the special uh, case of diagonal matrix, whose all diagonal entries, AIIs, are ones. Okay. This is called the identity matrix. Main diagonals are all ones and off diagonals are all zeros. If you multiply this identity matrix to any matrix, uh, it, is, uh, it is the matrix uh, A itself. In triangular matrix, here this is upper triangular matrix and this is called the, the uh, lower triangular matrix. Okay. Mm -hmm. And symmetry matrix is a matrix uh, so, such that A transpose is equal to A, something like this. This is this A, uh, this matrix and its transpose is the same, so it's a symmetric matrix. And this matrix also, with the main diagonal entry, is uh, uh, symmetric, so it's a symmetric matrix. These are the examples of symmetric matrix. Inverse matrix. A matrix, M by M matrix A, is called the invertible or non-singular if there exists an n by n matrix B such that A, B is equal to identity. Okay? If this is the case, this matrix B is uniquely determined by A, so it, it, uh, it is called the inverse of A, and we denote it as A inverse, like this. A square matrix that is not invertible is called the singular or non-invertible. Uh -huh. In this case, there is no uh, such a matrix B that makes A, B is equal to identity, or B, A is equal to identity. For an inverter matrix of A, B, and non-zero scalar K, the following hold. If A is invertible, then A inverse is also invertible. And the inverse of A inverse is A itself, and AB is invertible, and the inverse of AB is equal to B inverse times A inverse. We can easily check that uh, because the definition of A inverse, uh, all you have to do is check the multi check the multi product of uh, this matrix and this matrix uh, is going to be an identity matrix. Is that like what we see in here? The proof. Is here. 
Mm -hmm. Same thing here. There is a proof. All you have to do is a product. So the inverse of A inverse is A itself. The inverse of AB is this. Since product is identity. And mm -hmm. since this is this hold, so inverse of A transpose is the transpose of A inverse. Here, product of this is identity, which means the inverse of Ka is 1 over K times A inverse. Okay. So those are the proof, which is easy. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is just multiply uh, to make it identity, uh, to check the inverse matrix. Okay, next, find the inverse matrix of A here. If A is uh, this, where A, B, uh, we have learned uh, the in the in how to find the inverse matrix of 2 by 2 matrix A uh, when uh, matrix A, uh, which is A, B, C, D, with AD minus BC is not zero, then A inverse is defined in this way. If you multiply this matrix with uh, ABCD, then you will see it is an identity matrix. Okay, so for this, yeah, we can find it, the inverse in this, with this formula, but if we just ask them A dot inverse parenthesis, then it gives you the proper inverse of that matrix. Uh, then it, this works not only for this, but also for any matrix of any size. Mm -hmm. If we define this one as 4 by 4 and give the 16, uh, full, uh, or 16 entries in here, then you will have the inverse of that matrix when it does exist. So now we can check whether the given matrix is invertible or not. And if this is a matrix, then we can ask him, uh, is A invertible? A dot is invertible? And so they says it's false. And that comes from, it has a zero rule. Thing. So if you have a large size matrix, then you can check. You can check whether it is invertible or not. Mm -hmm. So, with this simple command, uh, A dot is invertible, mm -hmm. give us, it's not true. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you can, you can check uh, the, any side of matrix uh, that you see uh, from uh, your, your book that has a matrix in it, then you can check whether those matrices are, uh, are invertible or not. And here, find the bigger 5 by 5 matrix for the, from the well, internet or other textbook and check whether transpose and inverse matrix uh, exist. If those exist, find out what those are. So, if you find the matrix, then you can put 5 by 5 matrix in here, and then you can check the inverse, or and also you can you can find it. Something like that. You can find it here and do others. Transpose. Now you can find the transpose here. Then. Then yeah, if uh, you now the five by five, all you have to do is uh, so extend it like this, and should have uh, five of them. One, two, three, five. One, two, three, four, five, 
and you change it, is uh, something like. So now you have a 5x5 five five matrix. Yeah, we can check whether it is invertible or not. And if they exist, we find the inverse and the transpose of it. Then, yeah, it gives us a 5x5 five five matrix and its inverse, its transpose, like this. Okay? Uh, mm -hmm. So, we, yeah, we can, we can do the matrix computation without any difficulty for any of size. I think. I thought this is a very easy way uh, for you to uh, start the matrix computation for the artificial intelligence. Okay, here is the homework. Uh, add your comment in Q&A on what you have learned from the activity of your summary or practice or question or answers. So, yeah, we have studied it. We have studied it. And uh, so you can give you, can give you you can review, you can summarize what you have learned and share in, in QA, or you can share what you practiced, or if you find any questions, why go through your textbook and my lecture uh, in QA, and then you, know, you will have the answers. Or you may and add your answers in. And these are the examples of those PBL report uh, that I had. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Here. Mm -hmm. then, the, then that will uh, help you to understand you know, what you're going to do and how you're going to do. Mm -hmm. oh, I take some time. So if we take a look on the what uh, discussion was made before and you may uh, go this website web address uh, then you will see uh, how the students have studied uh, and what kind of uh, the discussion was made uh, and how to summarize them mm -hmm. so we, you it will help you to understand it mm -hmm. and also uh, On, uh, on this on, on, on another uh, website uh, that also shows uh, you are your classmate uh, and uh, in earlier uh, semester uh, so, uh, uh, summarized what they have studied and discussed and these are the, the way that you will uh, study over uh, this uh, semester okay. and if you have any question and you don't have to retype it and you can just copy uh, those uh, summary and, and ask it again to under, until you understand what we have learned okay. so there are uh, things that uh, you will understand mm -hmm. now i introduce uh, one more web page that I made uh, for you. And this uh, 220 Math for AI Final PBL2 uh, is written uh, by the Yuhai Alexander, uh, who is an international student uh, majoring in biomechatronics uh, engineering. And uh, he summarized uh, most of what he studied uh, in English. Uh, so this site uh, will definitely help you to go through what you're going to learn over uh, this semester. Mm -hmm. And if you have any question that you, under you don't understand, then you may just copy, uh, you may just copy this and share it in Q&A of our campus uh, to me and to, or to your classmate uh, to get the answer 
until you understand uh, the content. It has uh, many good information in English, which is written by students just like you. Uh, so that will definitely help you. I think that's uh, enough uh, for today's lecture, and that's the end of uh, the, the, the uh, matrix and the AI and uh, matrix today. And next, we will continue. We will continue uh, the week three. Mm -hmm. And uh, for linear algebra part that you learned, if you want to know more about it, uh, then I introduced you uh, the web pages before, and, but also uh, this is will, will be uh, a good content matrix product and uh, some computational exercise. Mm -hmm and uh, new problems solutions and these are the kind of uh, easy and nice uh, way to understand uh, modern inverse matrix uh, and elementary matrix etc if you have time uh, to, to go further i think that's good for uh, today's lecture and Thank you for attending. Mm -hmm. See you.